everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Fabula Living with Angela Jones. I'm your host, Angela Jones. Happy Sunday again. Ah, it's a beautiful day. Well, kind of, sort of beautiful. Sun's decided to kind of come out here in D.C. Um, but it's another day, so it's beautiful. I woke up and I was able to see it, so I'm happy. <laughs> Hope everyone has had a wonderful week and they're having a great start to their week. I am. I had a wonderful day yesterday, kind of starting off um, All Things Mother's Day. I don't know if you remember my two guests that I had on back in February, um, the two co-owners of Chosen Fashion, and then I brought in the little dog, and they had the little doggy attire um, that they make and everything. Well, yesterday they had a shopping social to kind of lead up to Mother's Day for people to come and shop, and it was like this mini expo. It was fabulous. I should have Dang, I should have given Jay some pictures so we could have put those up, but it was really amazing. Um, definitely check out my Instagram, at Fabula Living, so you can check out um, the videos that I made because I served as their hostess. So that was a lot of fun yesterday. So it got me thinking, hey, Mother's Day is next week, and, one, and I want to help you guys get prepared to shower the special woman in your life with some, you know, with some love. So... As you can see here, I got a little cooking thing going on here. You know, I'm gonna call last week's show my blooper show because everything that could and would go wrong last week happened. My fajitas didn't sizzle, the station station's power went out because of my burner. It was madness. So all the things that kind of went on, the show was 10 minutes late. <laughs> so, hey, if at first you don't succeed, you what? Try, try again. So that's exactly what I'm doing today. And I thought what we do in the interest of time, because, um, you know, you guys bear with me with this whole cooking live. It's a little different than when you're cooking in your home and you have everything you need and, you know, at your disposal. But what I'm going to do today is I decided that when I'm going to cook, I'm going to cook in the first segment because then it'll be less harried on the back end when my colleague is coming in to do his show right behind me at six o'clock. And that'll give me time for the burner to cool down and all that good stuff. So I got in early, the burner's hot. I'm gonna move the burner over while I continue to talk so we don't have any fiascos like we did last week, even though there's nothing to sizzle this week like the fajitas, but it's still important that the, you know, that the skillet is hot. So, what I decided to do for this first half of the show is it's going to be dedicated to, it's going to kind of continue on our whole like cooking thing that we've been doing um, that I started last week, but this is going to be focused on Mother's Day. So I have a PowerPoint. Of course, you know, I have a PowerPoint, right? Y'all are like, and when don't you have a PowerPoint, girl? So we have a PowerPoint. Today's show is called for mom with love, unique gift ideas for Mother's Day. So I have some really cool things that I have found online that I want to share. Some other couple, you know, some other unusual and unique kind of things you can do that are really nice and special for your mom. So first up, breakfast in bed is the first thing we're going to do. And this is what I have, to me, this would be a great Mother's Day breakfast menu. Buttermilk pancakes with pure maple syrup, crispy bacon, scrambled eggs, fresh fruit and yogurt parfait, juice or, you know, juice and then coffee or tea. That to me is the perfect breakfast. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to focus on uh, just doing, I don't want that to get too hot. I'm just going to focus on doing the pancakes for the show. I'm not going to do any of the other things in the interest of time and space and all of that good stuff. So, you know, I'll give you, I'm going to give you some tips on how to make your bacon crispy, how to make really creamy scrambled eggs. But today our focus is going to be on making some delicious buttermilk pancakes. So the first thing I wanted to do is um, kind of show you some common mistakes to avoid when preparing pancakes. So first up is not using fresh ingredients. You want to use the best of the best. You want to make sure that everything is fresh, in particular, your baking soda. If you're not using self-rising flour, and FYI, self-rising flour already has the baking powder and um, in it. But you want to still make sure that everything is fresh, because if 
your baking soda isn't fresh, and I mean like six months or less old, then it's not going to rise because that is your leavening agent in your pancakes. That's going to give them the volume so that you have nice fluffy pancakes. That's the whole point. So we want to definitely make sure that they are nice and fluffy. So you want to make sure you're using fresh ingredients. Now let me tell you what my go-to flour is. As you all know, I have southern roots. Born here in D.C., but I have southern roots. So my favorite flour is white lily. I, I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but white lily flour is amazing. It's like a staple in a southern baker's uh, pantry. So I use uh, white lily flour. So I used uh, a cup and a fourth of white lily flour. And I kind of went through, and there are two tablespoons of sugar in here too. So that's already in here in my bowl. So I'm just going to form a well. Like, and what a well is, you just kind of want to, you know, basically what a well is. You just kind of want to hollow out the flour and the sugar mixture and just kind of make an area so that you can easily add the wet ingredients right there in the middle. But in the interim, while things are still kind of heating up here, let's kind of continue to go through the common mistakes you want to avoid. Next up is when you're making your pancakes, you don't want, you want your pancake batter to be lumpy. And I know that's kind of counterintuitive, especially when you're baking a cake or something, you want to make sure it's a nice smooth batter. Not the case with pancakes. You want them to be, it's okay that it's lumpy. You actually want the lumps to be in there because if you over mix the uh, batter, then the gluten will develop the flour and then in your batter, and then you'll end up with chewy pancakes. We do not want chewy pancakes. These are but fluffy buttermilk pancakes. We don't want them to be chewy. That's not a good combo. Chewy pancakes. That doesn't sound appetizing to me. So that's number two. Number three is you want to make sure you're cooking with oil. You want to use oil instead of butter because butter is going to burn too fast. So we don't want that. So you definitely want to make sure you're using oil instead of butter in your pan. And the next thing you want to do is you don't want to skip the test run. Because you know you always have like that first uh, few pancakes that kind of don't come out all that great. You, that's okay. That's your test run. And then you can kind of put those over to the side because then you know that your skillet is just right. But a tip on that to make sure that your skillet is hot enough is you want to just add just, just a few drops of water. And once that water totally evaporates, you know that your skillet is hot enough. So that's just a quick tip on that. So, but it's okay back to the uh, test batter. You definitely want to make sure you do that so you can kind of get the duds out of the way. So that's a good thing to do. The next thing you want to make sure is that you don't flip your pancakes too early. You know when your pancakes are, are ready to flip because you will, not only will they just start to bubble, but the bubbles will actually turn into it will burst and turn into holes, then you definitely know it's time to flip your pancakes. Again, that's the same thing. That's what happens in the test run. When you do a test run and you know that it didn't kind of come out quite right, because you flipped them too early, you have to be patient. You know, just give it a few minutes. I know you're hungry. I know I get anxious like that when I'm cooking too. I'm like, oh, I just want, I want to hurry up and eat this. And you kind of, you know, but patience is a virtue. So you want to wait a little bit, then flip them. Um, and then I'll kind of get to the last thing. I have a whole little, you know, soapbox thing on the using fake syrup. So our skill is hot enough. We're going to proceed with making our pancakes. So we have the well in here. And again, just to recap, it's a cup and a half of self-rising flour, and it's also two tablespoons of sugar. Next, you want to put in three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. And I like to use buttermilk as opposed to just regular milk because buttermilk is going to give it, um, the batter, that extra kind of tang to it. And if you only have just regular milk, then um, just add a squeeze of lemon to the milk. And then that'll kind of give it like that tang that you kind of um, need when you make, um, that you use, that you get from buttermilk. So that's just a, another little quick tip that you want to use if you don't have buttermilk because I know everybody's gonna kind of keep buttermilk around and sometimes finding full fat buttermilk is hard you can easily find low fat buttermilk but it's hard to find low uh, to find full fat buttermilk because if you're gonna use buttermilk let's go all the way you know let's not just you know say oh I'll use low fat we're eating pancakes people with syrup and butter stop it 
go all the way. Put everything in there that belongs in there. And exercise tomorrow. That's what I say. Here I'm adding uh, one egg that's already been uh, lightly beaten. And that's everything. That's everything that you need in the pancake mix. So we're going to incorporate everything. And one thing you want to do with pancake mix, like I said, is you don't want to over mix. So we just want everything to be fully incorporated. Uh oh, I don't know what that was, but. <laughs> So, all right, now we are ready. And what I decided to do, you know, we're showing mom some love. So I have these cute little heart-shaped, um, you can either use them for pancakes or you can use them for, um, like if you want to make like individual like little eggs or something to put on a sandwich or something like that. I don't know where I bought these from years ago, but I thought they were so cute. And since we're, you know, this is all about showing mom some love, I thought that the heart-shaped um, little, um, what is this thingy called? Little heart-shaped, uh, whatever. Heart, we're gonna have heart-shaped pancakes, people. I can't, my brain, I had a brain freeze. <laughs> so I already have one here in the skillet. And then we're gonna just add some of the batter, and it's a little, it's going, it's a little thicker than I would like it to be, but that's okay. We're gonna make it work. There, I'm gonna let that continue to cook and do its thing. Should be a little looser than that, folks. Again, bear with me while I'm doing this on the air stuff, y'all. Um, and I didn't bring extra milk because, y'all, there's a lot bringing all this stuff in here. So <laughs> you have to remember every single little thing, but we're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. We're going to woosaw about the whole thing. So while that is cooking, let me, let me start to, you know, kind of go in on my whole little diatribe about syrup. You're going to go through all this effort to make these delicious, fluffy, homemade pancakes, right? I mean, that's the whole point, right? So go ahead and use like the real deal syrup. Use 100% pure syrup. Don't use fake me out, you know, Mrs. Butterworth, Mrs. Butterworth or Log Cabin. Get 100% pure. You can taste the difference. I mean, pure syrup is so, it's, first of all, it's lighter and it's going to be um, clearer. And it's, it doesn't taste so... Um, Fake, <laughs> for lack of better words. It just doesn't taste so fake. Okay. Uh-oh. There we are. So I'm releasing it from the pan. Oops. Let's get that excess off. And we're going to flip. Okay. Next, um, like I was saying, is you just kind of want to make sure that the, you, wanna, you use pure syrup because it's just going to give you that cleaner, just lighter taste than like the uh, syrups that have like a lot of uh, high fruit toast corn syrup in it. So you're going to taste all of that. And I know that if you've been used to eating like the fake syrup, it's kind of, you know, you may say, oh, this, is, this, this pure syrup doesn't taste right. That's actually the way it's supposed to taste, people. We're just so used to eating the fake stuff, you know? But when you try the real stuff, you won't go back. I'm telling you, you won't go back. So... Bear with me, I'm having a little bit of a technical difficulty here because I didn't have quite enough milk. But we're gonna we're gonna go with it, y'all. We're gonna go with it. There. All right. All 
right. So we're gonna turn that off, keep it warm until we're ready to plate. We'll move that to the side. And now we're gonna go on to my tips for making crispy bacon and creamy scrambled eggs. Now, I made some bacon that I already have over here because bacon, as you know, when you make it at home, it's a mess. So I definitely wasn't trying to bring bacon in to make that here on the set. But I did want to share with you some tips that I have for making crispy bacon and making really creamy scrambled eggs. So first up is contrary to popular belief, we always think that, oh, yeah, the, ba the skillet should be hot when we, you know, when we fry bacon. The best way to cook bacon to ensure that it's going to be crispy is place the bacon in the pan in a cold skillet. Not in a, in a pipe and hot skillet, in a cold skillet. Because then that way, the, it has, the fat in the bacon will have time to render. And, you, and it won't cause the bacon to then, you know, have to work overtime to try to cook longer so that it'll get crisp. And then what you will usually end up with is you put it in a hot skillet, you're going to end up with really chewy bacon. Some people like chewy bacon, but I like crisp bacon. So if you like crisp bacon, this is definitely the way to go. Um, so yeah, that's number one. You definitely want to make sure you use a cold skillet. So next up is use a cast iron skillet the bacon that i prepared today i prepared it in a cast iron skillet and i kind of think i went on my whole thing last week when i was talking about some of the main things that are great to have in the kitchen are for an example like your cast iron skillet definitely great for frying bacon because it cooks it faster like if you were to fry bacon like in a stainless steel pan like this on average to, you can probably get like and this is a small skillet like three slices in here it's going to take you about 11 minutes to fry it cast iron skillet if you're hungry <laughs> it's only going to take eight minutes so if you're hungry those eight minutes <laughs> the three minute difference hey that makes a difference between how fast it gets in your belly but honestly like i said cast iron skillets are um they're a heat conductor, they, so they, it holds heat faster, so it's definitely gonna definitely cook your bacon faster and crisp it up too. So definitely wanna invest in a cast iron skillet if you don't own one. And then the last tip that I have for bacon is, if you're cooking bacon for a crowd, let's say you're not just doing this for mom for Mother's Day, you're doing it for a, uh, you know, a big group, or you have a big family, like you have a family of four or six or whatever. I say if you're cooking bacon for more than one or two people, cook it in the oven. I'm telling you, it'll save you a lot of mess. It'll save you a lot of time. You just want to put it all on a cookie sheet with a wire rack on top. Put the bacon on top so that the fat can kind of drain to the pan. Put it on 450 for maybe about, maybe about 20 minutes. I mean, you have to know your oven too and watch it or so, about 20, 25 minutes or so. And you have crisp, delicious bacon. You know, instead of doing all these different, you know, rounds that you have to do in a skillet it'll all be cooked at one time you don't have to cook all remove all the splatter from everywhere and you've got enough bacon to feed a crowd so those are some really cool tips about cooking bacon and who doesn't love bacon i mean i know some sorry i know there's some people that don't love bacon that are vegetarian or vegan not knock but i'm just saying most people that eat meat i mean bacon makes every taste thing taste better if you eat meat and for those who don't eat it anymore don't you remember how good bacon used to taste it's so good it's so good. Bacon makes everything taste better. And then if you have crisp bacon, the best. Okay, so for the eggs. So, first off, you want to make sure that your eggs are fresh. I know you're like, duh, Ange, why would I be using eggs that aren't fresh? But you know, sometimes if you don't, like, I don't, honestly, I don't eat eggs. So, because I don't eat eggs, I don't eat eggs, um... Eggs will last a long time in my refrigerator. So I always have to kind of check and kind of make sure that, you know, my eggs are still good. And let me tell you how you do that. So you want to test an egg for freshness. You want to take a bowl with some water in it. And then you want to, to see if the, if the egg, so if, the, if you put the egg in the water, and if the egg lays on its side at the bottom, of the bowl, it's still fresh. If the egg stands upright on the bottom, it's still fine to eat, but you should probably hard boil it or eat them relatively quickly. And if the egg floats to the top, it's past its prime and it's not good for eating. So 
So those are kind of like the little tips on knowing that your eggs are fresh. Because who wants to, you know, it's different if you're baking with eggs. You know, you kind of have a, you know, a little more wiggle room. But if you are actually making scrambled eggs, you want to make sure that the eggs are really, really fresh. So I know that seems like a no-brainer, but you just want to make sure the eggs are fresh, people. And again, as I said last week, when you're making eggs, you want to make sure that you're cooking them low and slow. And again, I know if you're anxious to eat, because breakfast is one of my favorite meals, so I'm always anxious to hurry up and eat it and eat breakfast and get to it and cook it really quickly. But you don't want to be anxious when you're, when you're preparing eggs. You want to, you know, like I said, low and slow is the way to go. Like they say about when you're making barbecue and things like that, like people will say, hey, you can't be impatient if you're like, you know, making barbecue because you need to let it, you know, roast or, you know, for like hours, sometimes like a day or so. So same thing with eggs. I mean, we're not talking about a whole day, but I'm just saying, you know, the proper way to really cook eggs, it really should take about 15 minutes to cook scrambled eggs. And then you're like, what? Just saying. I mean, if you really want really, and this is again, if you want really creamy eggs. Now, if you like your eggs cooked hard or whatever, then hey, have at it then you can cook them faster if you'd like. But if you want to kind of have a nice creamy plate of scrambled eggs, low and slow is the way to go, people. Avoid turning up the heat. And then the other thing you want to do is you kind of want to do the swirl. So when you're making the eggs, you kind of want to swirl, you know, your wooden spoon or your uh, rubber spatula in the eggs because you want to kind of have small, like, curds you know, of the egg, and then you kind of want to do a sweeping motion. So then the eggs kind of have a larger kind of curd, and then voila, you have creamy, delicious scrambled eggs. So folks, next up, um, we are going to, I'm going to do a little switcheroo here. So Jay's going to put the banner up. And I'm going to transition over to the smaller table so that we can kind of get the plate set for uh, outfitting the tray for mom for Mother's Day. Right back. All right, so did a little switcheroo here. So what we have here is I decided to prepare the actual tray for the breakfast in bed for mom. So what we want to do is I have everything plated, and you want to make sure you have some flowers on the tray. Treat mom. It's a special day. We want to make sure we use, you're using china, your linen, your stemware. Don't give mom breakfast on a paper plate. Don't do that. That is not showing mom any love, people. So you want to make sure you're really making it very special for your mom. So make sure you have everything, like, all set up on the plate. And let me make a, one other quick tip, too. I mean, I guess I'm kind of out of this business because my son is older. But if you have smaller children, like hubbies out there that are thinking about doing something special for mom and maybe thinking about doing breakfast in bed, you know, Solicit your children, to your, even your small children, to help. Even if they know they're pouring mommy's juice or, you know, 
you know, let them pour the syrup on the pancakes for, for mom or help you to scramble the eggs so they feel like they're really a part of the special day. So whatever is age appropriate for your kids to do to help, even if they're small, you want to make sure that they're still feeling like they're included in the process too. So definitely want to do that. Like I said, have some fresh flowers, your linen napkin, um, you know, her favorite tea or coffee and some juice and have everything all set up on a lovely tray for her. And then we have our uh, syrup. I'm going to have all that already all poured on there for her. And take it up to her and shower mom with love. So next up, I'm going to share with you some really nice and cool gift ideas for Mother's Day gifts and some other like unique things that I have in mind uh, to uh, kind of do something a little out of the box, a little slightly out of the box, not totally out of the box, but a little something a little different for mom for Mother's Day. So come right back. More Mother's Day gifts. <laughs>
welcome back to Fabulous Living with Angela Jones. Hey, one quick thing that I failed to mention when we were when I was showing you the whole setup for the the breakfast in bed for mom is don't forget to have a nice card on the tray for her already, so that can be one of the first things that she, that she sees when she gets your delicious breakfast. So you want to make sure you have a nice, beautiful Mother's Day card for her, and write a nice, pretty handwritten note in there, and letting her know how special she is to you and how much you love her. So don't forget that nice little touch, too. So next up, we are going to jump right back to my handy-dandy PowerPoint. <laughs> And we're going to do, um, next, we're going to, remember when I did the Fabula Finds last month and I kind of went through my favorite things that I found, different purchases and things like that? So we're going to do the Fabula Finds uh, today, and we're going to do it for, we're gonna, this is going to be our Mother's Day edition. Like that? So I've what I did was I have kind of curated like a little list of things that I found online that I thought would make really nice Mother's Day gifts, and I want to share that with you all in this second segment. So first up, I am an accessories lover. I love accessories, whether it's jewelry or a handbag or um, any kind of little thing that I can put like little gadgets in to make it look elegant instead of like the normal way, like nice segue to this lovely case here you know like anything like that so i love accessories shoot it all i love it all but so this is for the mom that's the accessories lover so this is a really nice mark and graham leather charger roll up um jay can we go back i'm sorry can we go back one more slide to the first one to the yeah right there yeah i wanted to focus on this one first off because think about it we have our phones, we have our iPads, we have to charge things, and you're on the run, or you're, you run out of um, power on your phone, and you're like, oh, I don't have my charger, it's in the car. This case is great, because it's a nice leather case. You can put your charger in it, you can put your earbuds in it. It's, I don't know about you, because sometimes you have to end up scrambling trying to find your earbuds if you don't have, if you're carrying a handbag that doesn't have pockets, or, you know. So this is great, because you can put everything in there, and then you can just simply roll it up, you can get it monogrammed for mom with her initials on it, which I think is a really nice, classy touch. And everything that she needs is in that roll-up. This is also great if you're traveling, too. If your mom is a traveler or, or, you know, it's not just for, like, when she's about town, but if you're traveling, it's a great way to keep everything um, in one spot that you're going to need for your gadgets. So Mark & Graham is a great company. They have really cool, like, leather handbags and key rings and different... Um, kind of things like this, passport cases, all kinds of stuff. They have stuff for your home too. And the whole big thing is like monogramming everything. So if you know your mother would like something monogrammed, Mark and Graham is a great company. So their website is www.markandgram.com. Um, and they're also owned by Pottery, their sister stores are Pottery Barn, William Sonoma, West Elm. So really nice merchandise or you know, reasonably priced. You know, you can find a lot of good, reasonably priced things there, too. So that's the first thing on the accessory lovers uh, list. The next up is another item that I found from Mark and Graham. You can tell I was kind of, like, killing the Mark and Graham <laughs> website, but I really like their website. This is their um, beach tote. It's a hand-painted beach tote that, again, you can get some monogrammed. And I think this is great, because, and it comes in a number of different colors, too. Like, there was one that was, like, a soft pink and navy blue. Um, there were, like, five or six different colors you can get. And it's a great tote, a carry-all for mom. Like, And not just for the beach. Like, a straw tote you can just use any time in the summer. But it's great because you can just put everything that you need in your in a tote bag. And if mom you know, is a bag lady, like, wah. <laughs> it's a great tote to have to just kind of, to kind of be a carry-all, something you can use during the week at work during the summer. And then it's also something you can easily, you know, uh, use in, on the weekends when you are actually going to the beach or you're going away or whatever. And you can, it's big enough that you could put a beach towel in and your sandals, your sunscreen and all that good stuff, your sunglasses, you know. So they have a mini tote that's 99 and then they have a larger tote that's 159 But I just thought that that was a really cute um, accessory to have now that the weather's finally getting warmer and 
um, all that good stuff. So I just thought that was a really cool, like, little Mother's Day gift to get for mom. So next up, for mom, the domestic diva. Now, if your mother is really into cooking and baking and things like that, Sidebar, I know some people are like, some, I know some women are like this. Do not get me anything that I got to cook or clean. Don't buy me a vacuum cleaner. Don't buy me. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not that person because I like all this kind of stuff. But if that's not true, if your mother will be offended or husband's boyfriend, if your wife or your girlfriend is going to be offended by that, do not repeat. Just ignore this section, <laughs> section altogether. But if your mother is really into things like that, then she will love these next items that I have for the domestic diva. Now, this is a KitchenAid mixer. I love KitchenAid products, but especially the mixer. I got the mixer about 15 years ago. It was my first experience with a KitchenAid mixer. And I will never go back. I will never buy any kind of mixer again because it is the best. I am convinced it's maybe it's all in my mind, but I feel like my cakes and things taste better <laughs> ever since I got a KitchenAid mixer. It's just so good. I mean, it's it's a great, and it's the closest you're going to get to like a commercial mixer. I mean, it's a pretty close for a home appliance. It's amazing. So I bought this for my mom a couple of uh, Mother's Days ago. Actually, I got it in that red because her, her kitchen is um, red as her accent color. Hi, Mom. Um, so they're amazing and they come in a million colors. So this you can get on Amazon and you know that it'll be here in a few days. If you are like last minute, Larry, last minute, Lisa, and you haven't gotten anything for your mama yet, you may want to do Amazon. <laughs> That's the way to go. If you're not, if you don't want to deal with the stores and everything, but Amazon has it and I'm serious. I'm not exaggerating. They have everything from, you know, the standard white or the stainless steel to the copper, to the red, to pink and green lime green and navy blue they have seriously they have about 25 different shades so there is some shade on there you can find for your mom and um this is a five quart one and it's 289 little something you know i just kind of want to share with you is that sometimes costco has um kitchen aid mixers and they are I want to say maybe a good $75 less sometimes, maybe anywhere from $60 to $75 less. So if you have a Costco near you, you may want to check it out and see if Costco has any um, KitchenAid mixers. This is about the time they may have them because they know that people are kind of thinking about doing those kinds of gifts for their moms for Mother's Day. So that's something to keep in mind, too, if you want to save a little bit of dough. So next up is another find that I found on where Mark and Graham again. <laughs> Sorry, people. They just have really cute stuff that I thought that you would like. And again, if this is not your mother's jam, then you don't need to get this. But I just thought if your mother's really organized and, you know, this is, I thought would be a really great idea if your, if the, your um, wife or your sister, your, whoever you're buying this for, the, the, whoever the mom is that you're buying it for, has children and things like that or is, really likes to be organized. I mean, you see in the picture on the left, you know, you can have all your groceries in there. If you're running around your, running around your kids to like soccer practice and things like that, you can even use it and have like their cleats and extra things that they need and their snacks and everything in here and it's all back here in this organizer that you have in the back of your car. It's perfect, especially if you have a, like an SUV. It is perfect. And then it's a two-in-one because that section in the middle where you see the milk kind of hanging out of it where it's zipped, that is like a, an insulated little section that you can have there, right there in the middle. And this is also great if you're doing a road trip. Think about it. If you're having like all your treats and things like that and you want to keep stuff cold, you can have things there and then you're you know, your fried chicken or whatever else, your sandwiches or whatever else that you have on the side, you can place those things on the side. So you can use it, for, it's a multi-purpose, but I thought that if your mother is really organized and, um, you know, and she likes grocery shopping, like I said, as I did a couple of weeks ago, she might like grocery shopping like me, maybe, I don't know, maybe, then she would really find this a value. And again, you can get it monogrammed, which is really nice, with just a single, a single monogram on the side, so. Another good gift for the domestic diva in your life. Now, the last gift on this list for the domestic divas in your, in your world are amazing. William Sonoma has fresh croissants that you can order. They come frozen. 
and you can they, you can ship you have to ship them to the person like pretty much like overnight, um, or I think they have them on dry ice because I did this for my mom I think last Mother's Day I think, and they're amazing. And what a nice, sweet treat. Like, maybe your mom lives away like mine does, and you can't do the whole breakfast in bed and everything for her, but you can kind of still have that same, you know, kind of go for that same idea, but you can have it shipped to her. And if she entertains a lot or, shoot, if she just likes bread, <laughs> get her these because they're amazing. They are life-changing. And think about it. I know somebody may say, $15, you know, I mean, $40 for 15 But think about it. If you go to a French patisserie, you're going to spend 4 or $5 on one croissant. So it's kind of like a savings when you think about it that way. And then you can pull them out as you need them. Like you can pull them out, let them rise as you need. You don't have to make all 15 at the same time. If you just want one, hey, that can be mom's treat. You just let them rise overnight. In the morning, you bake them, and your house smells completely amazing. And they're delicious. They're really light you know, and buttery on the inside and really flaky on the outside, like a true French croissant. They are delicious. Send mom these with some gourmet tea, you know, some jam and everything, and send that along in a, in a separate gift basket and then have those delivered. What a nice treat. I would love that. FYI, anybody want to get me anything for Mother's Day? This is something I would love. So... That's it on the section on for the domestic diva. Now, if mom is a beauty junkie, that's say she, you know, she wants fragrance or she wants something, you know, she's into makeup and things like that. I have some two really good products that I wanted to share with you all that are two um, things that I really love. One thing I haven't tried yet, I got to try it. But the first thing up, I love, I love, I love, I love. So, mom is a fragrance person. Joe Malone, oops, sorry, and that should be J-O. Sorry, y'all, I just caught that typo. Joe, J-O, it's a lady. <laughs> Joe Malone fragrance has amazing scents, y'all. I mean, amazing. And my favorite is the Peony and the Blush Suede, and it's so it smells so good. And with Joe Malone, you can make all these different... Um, Scents. You can mix different scents if you want. They have a freesia. They have one that's like um, that's like a, a pear. All different kinds of scents. That you can even do them. Um, you can either do candles or you can do um, the room, like the diffusers, which are great too. They're amazing. And they have travel sizes, so that's a nice. They also have a nice little gift box of like a um, like a sample of like all uh, several of their most popular fragrances, and you can just get like a travel set. You know, and then that way mom can try a couple of different things and see what she likes before, if you don't want to invest in a one big bottle. So this is a 3.4 ounce bottle and it's $135. But again, these fragrances last long. You don't have to use a lot. And a 3.4 ounce bottle of fragrance for $135 is cheap, to be honest with you. But, the, and everything comes, as you can see, really love, it's in lovely packaging. It's very classic with the black packaging or the cream packaging with the ivory or the black ribbon. It's really, really nice, and it's already done for you. Like, guys, if you don't really have to put a lot of thought into it, here you are. Go to Joe Malone. They'll have it all wrapped and packaged for you. Put it in a lovely Joe Malone bag, too, and you're done. Finito. It's over. So, website, www.joejomalone.com. And Nordstrom also carries this product, too. And go to their website and find out where their standalone star stores are because they have quite a few. If you live here in the city, we have one um, right in City Center, down in the heart of downtown. So, Joe Malone, great sense. I mean, really, really lovely sense. Another one is something that I just discovered recently, and I'm actually going to be making a stop at Target when I leave here to find it, um, but Lip Bar Lipstick. This is a black-owned sister, uh, a black-owned uh, company, and I'm almost certain that she tried out for Shark Tank, and they declined her, uh, uh, they declined to support her uh her project. So she went on ahead and I think she financed it and did everything on her own after the show. And it has blown up. 
she now has her products. I think in the last few months, I saw I just started following her on Instagram, and or the company rather, and now it's in Target stores. Wonderful thing that's awesome about this product is that it's vegan and cruelty free. She decided that she just thought that makeup she loved makeup but it had way too many chemicals in it and she doesn't like to wear a whole lot of makeup but she likes lipsticks and she thought that hey when you have you have that pop of color that's all that you really need so, and she has amazing colors this color that's on display is called cougar i'm on this i'm on the search for this cougar <laughs> lipstick i really like that it's really a nice pretty nude but definitely check them out www.lipbar.com and again, I've done this for my mom, and I know everybody can't go and buy lipstick and things like that for their moms, but I know kind of what my mom likes. So one year, I kind of got like a cosmetic bag, and I went to like the MAC counter, and I filled it up with all, because my mother, she she wears makeup, but she's not like super crazy into makeup like that, but she likes to wear it, especially like on Sundays. So I got her like a really nice cosmetic bag, and I filled it with lipstick and nail color and blush and, you know, all these different colors that I thought that she would like, and it was a great gift that was something that she wouldn't probably buy for herself, you know, but it worked out, you know, and she ended up loving it. So that's why I kind of wanted to include something like that too. If your mom is really into things like that and you feel confident enough to buy her something, why not go for it and buy something um, in the cosmetic world? So next up, I kind of wanted to run through some other unique ideas that I had for mom. Um, that are kind of like a little off the beaten path, kind of, sort of. Some of them, you're going you're gonna to be, I know y'all are going to be like, really, Angie? But just go with me. So the first thing is um, a coupon book. I think, especially if you are a mom with young children, you know, a coupon, you know, you know, I think dads or whoever is buying it for the, you know, I think it's nice to get something like, have the kids like make a coupon book like for certain things like um mom i'm gonna you know mom this coupon entitles you to um me cleaning the dishes doing the dishes whenever you want or this entitles you this coupon make another one this month this one entitles you to uh, a car wash whenever you want your car wash like little things like that that'll make a big difference to mom mom this one you know um i'm gonna clean i'm gonna make sure my room is clean you know every Saturday in the month of, you know, May without your, without you having to ask things like that, that may not sound like a big deal, but it's a really big deal to mom, you know, and it's a cute little idea. And it's another thing to do if you don't have a lot of money to spend, maybe you don't have a big budget to go and buy a $135 bottle of fragrance, but you still want to do something for mom that's really nice and cute and practical and kind of ingenious. So that's another something that you could do for mom. It's a coupon book. The, ne the next thing is a tote bag. And um, I have a really cute tote bag that I wanted to show you all. I want to watch my time. I only have five minutes, people, so I'm going to run through this. Cute tote bag, Nordstrom.com. It's a Ted Baker bag. It's a $59 bag. And this is what I would, this is kind of stuff, again, that I think is really cute, and you don't have to put a whole lot of thought into it. Fill the tote bag, like, with magazines. Your mom's favorite, you know, coffee or tea, a nice throw, some tea cookies, you know, um, a journal, something like that, and put it all in a really cute tote bag with a lovely card and have the tissue. Beautiful gift. And you didn't have to spend an arm and a leg, and it's something that moms don't get a lot of time to do, me time, just some quiet time. After, you, after I put your little rug rats to bed, I can read my magazines and drink my tea in peace, <laughs> you know? And maybe mom's a wine drinker. Maybe you want to put a bottle of wine in there. Maybe because a little, little rug rats drive her crazy, she may need a little sippy sip. So you might want to do that. You can do wine if you want to. But I just thought that that was a little something different to do, you know, for mom. The next thing is go fruit picking. I know you're, that's why, I, that, that's the one I know people are going to be like, really, Ange? But again, I like to do stuff like that. And I like to do things that are different. So take, you and your mom have some quality time together. This is the time in a, maybe about another month or so, strawberries are going to be in season. There are plenty, believe it or not, even in this Washington metropolitan area, just right outside of the city, there are tons of places where you can get, where you can go fruit picking. Go pick some fresh strawberries together with your mom. Spend some time with her. Maybe go out to lunch or something. Then that evening or the next day, 
go and make a strawberry pie. Make a cheesecake and put those fresh strawberries that you just picked on, picked, you know, together and make that together and do that together. You know, especially if you and your mom cook together. That's something that me and my mom do. So if my mom lived here, we'd do that, right, Roxy? Wouldn't we do that, mom? Yeah. <laughs> Next, design a custom photo album. You know, we're always snapping pictures on our phones and things like that. And I ran it, this was a, an amazing website called Artifact Uprising. You can just go to their website and you can get a, do a custom, it almost looks like a professional level um, photo album that you can create for your mom. I mean, they have really, really nice products. And you see how they even have the, the banner you can put on the books and all kinds of stuff. It's really, really nice. And I'm thinking about, I can't say when I'm going to do it because people are watching, but I'm thinking, I have an idea that I want to use this. I'm going to use um, Artifact Uprising for and make a photo album, but that's a great idea. Now, the thing with Artifact Uprising is that the uh, last day to kind of get a book by Mother's Day is today. So you need to gather those pictures and do that one tonight. That needs to be your project tonight so you can get that in time so you can get it to your mom by Saturday, the, third, uh, the 12th. Next is hire a professional masseuse or manicurist to come to your mom's home, to go to your mom's home. Don't send her to the spa. Think about it. Being able to have that done in the, in the, you know, in the you know, comfort of your own home. She doesn't have to get in her car. She doesn't have to put any, you know, you know, dress all up to get to the spa and all of that. Have someone come to her. So depending on where you live, Google uh, mobile, you know, massage therapist or mobile um, manicurist and have them come to the home and do that. And they will do that. There's several in the D.C. area, too, um, that I found. So definitely Google them and put your city, you know, mobile spa services, you know, DC, mobile spa services, Maryland, and just add that to, you know, to your Google search and find a nice, you know, company that can do the spa services for your mom at home. And then maybe do something really special and have like, you know, some fruit and cheese and, you know, um, infused water and kind of create the spa experience for your mom at home. How fabulous is that? So then last but not least is give mom the gift of time. Women, as you know, I've said, you know, before, especially when we were doing the show on, um, with Michelle McKinney, where we were doing the um, things about women and how we kind of pull ourselves in so many different directions. We never have enough time. Now, I know that's just the plight of everyone, but especially women, we never have enough time. You know, we're being mom and the superstar at work, and, you know, it's a lot to juggle. So give her the, the, the gift of time. Like, for me, I'm an assistant. I'm an executive assistant, as you all know. I would love to have somebody be my assistant for the day. Have somebody run your errands for you. Get her a gift certificate that's like for a couple hours on a Saturday so she doesn't have to run to the grocery store, to the dry cleaners, to go to the shoe repair. You know, whatever it is that you want them to do, you can have them do it. And another a good website to do that on is TaskRabbit. So TaskRabbit.com, and you can find people that will do that for you for the day. Y'all, I'm out of time again. But I hope that you all have a wonderful time with your moms and spending the special day with her and celebrating your mother and all the mother figures in your life. Um, I'm not going to be here the next two weeks. Next week, I will be out of town for um, personal, you know, for pleasure. And the following week, I'll be out of town for business. So I won't see you guys again until two Sundays from now. But in the meantime, I hope you all have a, I hope all you mothers have a wonderful Mother's Day. I hope all of you celebrating with your mothers really shower your mothers with lots of love and attention because they deserve it. And I just want to leave you with this one quote. Youth fades, love droops, the leaves of friendship fall, a mother's secret hope outlives them all. And that's a quote by Oliver Wendell Holmes. Have a great week, everybody. Blessings. <laughs>